17 percent fewer kids applied for early admission to Harvard. And those that graduate, specifically graduate in Harvard Law, have fewer options. The Edelson Law Firm just pulled out of Harvard Spring Recruitment Forum. The firm specializes in mass tort litigation, a fancy way of saying they sue big companies and get big judgments, $45 billion and counting. Now they won't recruit at Harvard. Jay Edelson's here, founder and CEO of Edelson PC. Good to see you. Thank you. Um, all right. You've sent, you sent this letter on Friday saying we're not coming to Harvard Law. Any response? Please. I mean, are we serious? No, they're not going to respond. What, what's great about Harvard is um, not only are they not going to respond to me, they've actually pulled their contact information, so it's impossible to get through to anybody over there. Uh, that's how Harvard is. They want to hide behind statements. They, well, this is one of the biggest I, I, screw-ups in congressional testimony that I've seen, and they're tone deaf in terms of how it makes American Jews or Jews throughout the world feel when you've got one of the, one of the people with the biggest megaphones in the world and can't say calling for the genocide of Jews is wrong. We've, as Jews, we've seen this movie before. This is, this is not something we want to see again. She ought to be on our side. All right, so the, the term liberal New York Jew used to be a slur, right? Now I'm wondering if it's almost starting to become an oxymoron uh, in that how do Jewish Americans who were liberal, like yourself, I think you probably still consider yourself liberal now, reckon and square the circle of where the American liberal philosophy is. Well, I didn't know that it was a slur before, so that's interesting. Uh, but I take your overall point. Um, we thought that the progressive wing of the Democrat Party was with us. We've been hearing for years and years the idea of um, intergenerational trauma, uh, safe spaces, trigger words. Let's make sure everyone is protected. And, and we were with everybody. I still am. I want, I want to treat people with respect. I want everyone to feel safe. Um, it was shocking to a lot of us when there was some Jewish exception for that. We have, we have kids in college at the elite universities, and they're afraid to leave their dorm rooms. Um, my, my own kids don't want to wear Jewish stars out because they don't want to be identified as being Jewish. It, it, this, is, this is crazy, and, it, and it's coming not from the far right, but from the far left. From the far left. Right. So, in other words, and I think what you're trying to say is that if you want to talk about a group that's experienced intergenerational trauma, the Jews, the Jews have a few things to say, and you were surprised that you all were left out um, at Harvard and other places. But really, look, you've got Bill Ackman, who, who's gone on a tirade against Harvard. Uh, you have the president of Harvard now being excused for plagiarism. Uh, you have billions of dollars of donations being pulled from Harvard. You have people like you saying we're not going to recruit there. They're not changing their tune. Do they feel just totally emboldened and, and completely uh, immunized, immunized, if you will, from this kind of criticism? So I, I want to be clear. I don't think this is this is all progressives or all uh, people who believe in DEI. A lot of us, I, I grew up from a poor background. I care very much about giving people opportunity. But I do believe that, that there is an orthodoxy within certain elements of the progressives where the only thing that matters is their view on, you know, their chosen groups that are victims, and that's what they care about. So, no, I don't think that they care about losing donors. I don't think they care about their students. Uh, we're one of the few progressive uh, firms that, that um, are speaking to their students. You would think that they would, that they would want us out there. They don't care about that. What they care is, is something. Well, it's telling, right, that they care, they care more about their own personal political sort of thoughts and holding those near and dear than they do their students getting jobs. That says a lot about a university. You're a lawyer. Um, we, we reported a lot on the death of DEI, and it seems to be coming, right? This is the moment where they, DEI was exposed for what it was, which is only certain groups were protected and certain were not. Um, are we going to start seeing lawsuits by 50-year-old white men who are passed over by promotion? Are we going to start seeing lawsuits from kids at Harvard who were thrown out for plagiarism now that the president is not thrown out? Yeah, actually, you've already started seeing them. Um, what, what's crazy, so NYU has been sued. UPenn was sued before the UPenn president went and, um, and had another disastrous uh, testimony along with, uh, with President uh, Gay. Uh, so we've seen some of that, but there's going to be a huge movement now. Uh, and, and what's 
one, one of the things which I don't find any of this funny, but it's ironic, is one of the theories that we're going to use is a false advertising theory, which is you went out there, Harvard, and said, what we're going to give you is real diversity and protect everybody's individualisms, and you lied about that. And I don't know how, how kind of the, the crazies in the DI uh, movement even respond to that, but that's going to be a fun one in court. And those, those suits are coming. Yeah, I would show up. I would show, I would show up for that trial. I, I think about how this moved from Harvard, and we reported a lot on this in the first couple weeks uh, in the aftermath of October 7th of these, these protests on Harvard's campus, and now to massive street protests in the shutting down of America. There was a Harvard Harris poll, no irony perhaps in who was sponsoring the poll, but it showed basically two thirds of Americans, 18 to 24, believed in in the DEI movement, in the way the, the world looks at things, do you think that Jews are a class oppressors? 67%, two thirds of Americans, 18 to 24, view Jews as oppressors. Is that ignorance, you think, or something more? I think it speaks to something that's at the core of extreme DEI philosophy. And it's been hard for me to even understand this. But, but in 69% of Israel uh, says it has a 69% uh, right to exist. 31% say they do not have a right to exist. From progressives. It, it, this, is, this is madness. Um, but yes, they're, they're, you know, Jews are kind of waking up to the idea that, that when we talk about oppressors and oppressors, it's, it's whoever these 10 people in the room have defined it as so. Uh, so I've been asking questions, you know, where do these people fall into it? And there is a hierarchy. Yeah. And Jews were on the wrong end somehow. And you say, how about history? We've got 15 million Jews in the world, but, but we're the oppressors. Thanks for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.